So we're here for Jurassic World Evolution. I was wondering if you could sum it up in 20 seconds or less for our audience who haven't played it yet. It's uh, an opportunity for you lovers of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World to be the owner and manager of a park, of the park, and make dinosaurs and be involved in every bit of the process of making a Jurassic Park. What do you think of that? And then you'll hear from me. I have a word of uh, advice uh, and guidance uh, along the way here there. Do you have um, any sort of trick or hint for first time players picking it up that they might not realize at first? One thing I would definitely say is uh, check on your fences all the time. It's always worth checking on your fences because um, you never know when there's going to be a, a hole that just appears from out of nowhere on them. And one thing that happens as you go throughout the game is you can upgrade your fences. You can make them stronger, you can electrify them, you can even get concrete fences later on in the game. And that's really important because if you go throughout the whole game with these kind of chain link fences, the bigger dinos will just smash straight through those. If you look after your fences, your fences will look after you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the rest looks after itself. I think the design's done a really good job actually. And if you've uh, played the demo, or if you're going to play a demo, you'll find out where uh, they hold your hand at the beginning and then slowly release it until you're comfortable with it. I think it, it's probably better than any tips I can give straight away. I think just, just headlong in, headlong in, drive that Jeep, uh, watch out for the beautiful animations. Ranger teams are very important. You need them for pretty much everything in the park. They fix things, they restock, they look after your dinosaurs. I think to be honest, like, it sounds silly, but the more dinosaurs, the better. Like the people coming to your park really want to see dinosaurs. So even if you just created, you've only just um, managed to get a viable genome for one new dinosaur, it's always worth pumping out a few, not least because they want to socialize with one another to stay happy as well. Um, but also like the more dinosaurs, the more people they want to come to your park. So I would keep on finding new dinosaurs, keep on digging for, um, for new dinosaur fossils, but always try and like pack out your park with more and more dinosaurs because that means more guests and that means more more money. I think the main thing is that you're trying to look after the dinosaurs, but obviously people might get, a, you know, they want to try and mix it up a little. Um, so one thing you can do is you just place down one current creation lab, have a big enclosure around it, and then just keep releasing different dinosaurs in there and see what happens. You don't even need to put a fence on that if you didn't want, and just have a big open park, so it could be like a giant safari. Uh, one of the things I was experimenting with in one of our playthroughs, we just have a small area where the humans are and just let the dinosaurs roam all around the rest of the island. So the humans are almost in like a little enclosure? Yes. <laughs> so you can turn the tables and following the different divisions helps give you different aspects of the game that you can play through. For me it's just, it's, it's a game purely to have fun and, and it's, a, it's a game where you can't do anything wrong in a sense because you're just you're you it should be experimental it should sort of bring out the child and you should just play with it if something if if you're doing something it feels right then do more of it if you want to or break it and go down another route um, it's a game of the game has three main threads and it's a really good idea to swap between them just to get a feel of what what your play style is and uh, so if you're if you're into doing a traditional theme park where you want to get guest satisfaction, you go with that, or you can swap to uh, the scientific route and, you know, a lot of it's rooted in reality, so you learn stuff as you go to. Um, yeah, it's, it's, that's my top tip, just play with it. So you've mentioned how important the fences are, how we don't want the dinosaurs to plough into all the guests. <laughs> But I want to know how to create maximum carnage. Well, OK, so there's a number of ways you can do that. No fences is obviously an option. <laughs> but I mean, I guess the one way to really ensure maximum carnage is to actually build a good park to start with, because then you're going to have a really popular park. You're going to have lots of people. And, um, and I guess that's when the most potential for the most carnage is, you know. So then you can, you can open all your gates, you can, uh, you can close all your emergency shelters so people can't get away, <laughs> you, can, um, you can close off paths so that guests are stuck. There's all sorts of things you can do. I, I guarantee you that a lot of carnage will take place if they do those things. I would <laughs> love to know what the sort of funniest or strangest thing you can put in your theme park is or that you've seen happen. So, well, it's really interesting when you have a lot of the smaller 
faster dinosaurs because like they're, they're, quite, they're quite harmless dinosaurs by nature, they're little herbivores, uh, struthiomimuses and things like that. Um, but if they escape, they're really fast. So they can like plow through a whole load of guests really quickly and you see kind of guests kind of toppling here and there. And it's like, wow, they're almost as deadly as the T-Rexes to be honest when they get out. So uh, yeah, they just run away and um, yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely something to be seen when a whole load of struthiomimuses escape.